If you use the keyword "hate math" on YouTube, you will find tons of videos from the victims, either who have been abused by math or who are still being abused on a daily basis. What's interesting to me is a lot of victims get really emotional describing their anger about math. They can't phrase really well why they hate it, but one message is clear: math sucks. I want to share some of my own experiences in trying to figure out why people hate math. From that, on the spectrum of how much you love or hate math, ten years ago I would place myself in the middle. My usual mode is this dozing off mode because I didn't know what the teachers were talking about, and of course, occasionally I would be in this trouble mode. But now I would place myself closer to the end of loving it. But I wouldn't say that I'm extremely passionate about it because some people are just obsessed with math. They will love those symbols and rules unconditionally, like these ones. Their love for math seems unconditional. As soon as they see numbers, symbols, and formulas, regardless of whether the big picture makes sense or not, they will be high on symbols. In my opinion. These ones will love math even if big picture doesn't quite make sense. My love for math is conditional. I only love it when it starts making sense to me. When I analyze my own transformation, I started figuring out where the problems might be. People hate math because they don't make sense. Isn't that a joke? Isn't math supposed to be the gold standard in teaching people logics and reasoning? So how can it not make sense? This doesn't make sense, right? I would like to quote from one of the smartest book I've read, Black Swan. This is a brief summary about philosopher John Locke's definition of a madman: as someone reasoning correctly from erroneous premises. So there is perhaps only fine line between the two: a perfectly logical man good at reasoning, but just from the wrong starting point. This is the math joke I found. It says that math is the only place where people can buy 60 watermelons, and nobody wonders why. So putting those two side by side, you see my point, right? From my own experiences, the problem with the way math was taught is, before I even get to that logical reasoning part, I just can't see why I would even care about the problem in the first place. The starting point of math education is illogical. Actually, not only just math education, the whole STEM education is plagued with this problem. A logical starting point. I'm going to show you why from the very first subject most of us started with numbers. This is how I felt when seeing those zeros and ones popping up. Whenever people started talking about binary representation used by computers, of course you can force yourself to follow the rules to finish some practice problems. But somehow, there is still a strange feeling of alienation that's bothering me. This strange feeling produces lots of weird questions from me when I was first studying computer basics. For example, why just zero and one? What's wrong with two, three, and four? Why you can suddenly change the rules like that? Why computers can compute? There seems to be some mental blocks I just can't overcome, and I couldn't describe exactly what's been bothering me. Then I ask myself a question that makes me shivering: How do you compute two plus three equals to five? What? Five, of course. What kind of question is that? But if I can't explain it, then how am I supposed to understand how to design a computer to do so? After a few months' struggle, I finally figured out what are the mental blocks. I never really understand the nature of numbers and computing. My first lessons on numbers didn't quite make sense. To illustrate my point that why my first lesson about numbers is illogical, let's do a recap on our evolution. I'm not an anthropologist, so don't quote me on this. But I just want to gain a perspective about where we are now and where we have been. We started from being a monkey or an ape. Then, about 2.5 million years ago, human emerged. This was marked by the ability to make simple tools. Then, between 300 to 800 thousand years ago, humans learned how to make fire, and hence became cooks. 
Then between 30 to 70,000 years ago, something remarkable happened. Human became way smarter. They could make better tools, and they were even able to understand abstract ideas. They became artists, and they can recognize quantities. The earliest counting objects, tally marks, were dated around 35,000 years ago. Our interest is to study the evolution of number sense since this 35,000 years ago. Let's focus more on what happened during this 35,000 years. Human developed more complex social structures. Cognitive capability was enhanced dramatically. They became aware of abstract concepts, such as quantities. Counting artifacts can be dated within this period. About 12,000 years ago, human knew how to grow crops, and entered into agricultural society. This allows human live together in closer community, and encouraged communications. About 5,000 years ago, writing system as language and letters emerged. 800 BC, Roman numerals emerged. I can't find the exact dates. But I assume it would be around 800 BC because that's the time for ancient Rome. So let's say it is around 800 BC. Then AD 700, Arabic number system was developed in India. About 500 years after that, an Italian mathematician Fibonacci, when he was traveling with his father in Algeria, he found that the way Arabic traders did computing was more efficient because they were using Arabic numbers. He's the one introducing Arabic numbers to the West, but the transformation is only gradual. It took almost 400 years for Arabic numbers to take over the world. Let's project the evolution of our number sense onto this 2.5 million years stretch, when human first emerged. This is 2.5 million years ago. This is now. The whole section of this 35,000 years time span. Will contract to this segment, and this is now 2019. For anyone born around this time, they're expected to be ready for the society in 20ish years. Remember, since the Middle Ages, our knowledge about the world progressed in unprecedented ways, and an age of information explosion started in the latest 50 years. So all this progress we talked about up to the Middle Age would be taught to a kid in grade one or two, I guess. So how did we do that? Considering that our intelligence, when first born, might not have significant advantages over those humans from 35,000 years ago. Remember, language and letters were invented 5,000 years ago. Previous experiences and knowledge get condensed into text and writing, and we train these newborns by cramming. How can you cram thousands of years of gradual knowledge developments into an eight-year-old kid's brain? Well, you have to make them feel these numbers are realities. This will make it easier to train kids later on how to crunch numbers. My first lessons on numbers often gave me the impression that all of a sudden knowledge just pops up out of blue. The early day mesmerization of Arabic numbers have dramatic, long-lasting impacts on me. Whenever I think of numbers, those Arabic numbers will pop up. Whenever I think of computing, Arabic numbers show up. Somehow, subconsciously, I thought those symbols have magical powers. If you gave people the impression that these symbols are realities, then 20 years later, all of a sudden, the game was changed completely. To some people, it could be disastrous, because realities can't just change like that overnight. It feels like the sky is falling. Do you think that some smart Indian geniuses just spend a few days meditating, and then boom, Arabic numbers and positional number system? The reason it took so long between human first became aware of quantities to finally settle on how to name those quantities. I guess it's because this was how our cognition develops through both genetic mutation and endless trials and errors, and that took thousands of years. So what would happen if we cram all those gradually developed knowledge into our tiny little brain? 
which perhaps has no significant change over those thirty-five thousand years. Most people will suffer either immediately or from long-term impacts. The struggles I have when I was trying to understand how computers work are those long-term impacts. They make it so hard to keep open-minded. They make it difficult to learn new things, because old beliefs already took roots in me. To clear the mental blocks first, I gave myself a prescription: redo the topics on nature of numbers and computing, two important topics which no one ever tried to explain to us. Figuring out those two things helped me clearing out the mental blocks. There will be around eight videos on those. After that, I'm able to progress to the next step, where we will be talking about how numbers are represented in computers and who's the one doing the computing there. And then we are able to finally talk about how to build computing circuits to do computing. There will be eight to ten videos on those. I simply want to share my own understanding with you. Most of them are original. Lots of them won't have sources. Trust me. I really did hope someone would address those mental blocks, so that I wouldn't have struggled so much in the first place. But anyway, being original means they are subject to errors and bugs. So comments are welcome. Being tortured myself by those boring lectures, my first goal is to, of course, avoid that. But I also hate those superficial talks. Full of jargons and gestures, suggesting that everything just so simple. Why didn't you just get it? Intimidating people from asking questions. The 18-ish videos are going to be rolled out gradually, about one video every two to three weeks, except vacation days, which I will let you guys know. We are going to start our first topic in the next video about why I think Roman numerals really suck. It will help us understand our number system better.